posting. Okay. Okay. Here we're we are. live. We're showing. We're telling. We're hanging out. Welcome, it's true. Lance. And anybody else who shows up, why don't you show off your project, Lance? <laughs> yeah. It's just you. Okay. Just don't us. mind if I do. <laughs> yeah, just go for it. Uh, okay. Uh, so basically, this uh, little guy right here, not much to it, but um, the main thing I need on it is the accelerometer and being that it's bendable and on the board. Um, the reason being is there's a person um, that's on the Not Impossible Labs uh, website, and basically what it is is people with disabilities or people who are unfortunately less fortunate um, who basically need devices to help them with everyday use, maybe to pick up a pen or work with the computer. Um, yeah. So in my case, the reason I built this is so that it can be attached to a, a young guy uh, who's on a breathalyzer and paralyzed from the neck down. And right now he's using an Xbox controller with the stick to press the buttons, which that's not a good way to go. Um, so I'm trying to build this so that'll be... What, what is this? Uh, th basically, it's just a basic uh, bendable board, uh, the film, film Duino or something. Can you hold it up? Can we, I, I can't convert. Okay, now, yeah, here we go. All right, so these little circuit boards, and they're flex circuit boards, and they're connected together. That is correct, yes, okay. and it connects to a little LiPo battery. Um, and the idea is to make it so that it would attach to a hat or something that, so when he tilts his head to the left, let's say, five seconds, it'll go, okay, that's going to be a left click. To the right, that's going to be a right click after five seconds, and up and down for X, uh, Z, I think it is. Um, it'll know to scroll up or down or move up and down, depending on what the case is. So it'll basically be a a hat that's a mouse, because right now, in order to use a mouse, he's got to use a big Xbox controller, the the original kind, and it's hooked up to what looks to be like a, a car battery. Mm. I mean, it's repulsive. Uh, so something like this, like mm. 20 bucks, uh, you know, to connect to the computer. And uh, I have a little Bluetooth module which connects right to it. It's really teeny and can bend underneath it. Uh, the only problem is this does not come up as a, um, a human interface device. Yeah. So I have to take something uh, like Leonardo to hook up to act as like a dongle to the computer to send the information to. And then uh, I never had to make a, uh, a human interface device. So I don't know if I have to develop a driver or what the case nope. is. No. no, it's just built in. It works fine. In fact, we're working on a Bluetooth HID device. That's really? Play, although it doesn't do mouse, only this keyboard. So I don't know. Mm. Uh, well, I'm sure he's going to need that too, because right now he's just. Check back in a week <laughs> or two, and uh, we'll have it out. It's um, it can do HID, but the nice thing about HID is it works with, um, you know, um, Mac, Linux, Windows, all operating really? systems, Android tablets. No, no, t uh, no devices need. Um, drivers. It's a driverless protocol because all keyboards and all mice use the same interface, which is really nice. Like. They thought of that so that you can interchange them all without a driver, which is really, really handy. Um, that's why we thought it would be interesting for use with Bluetooth. But, um, yeah, this sounds like a really cool project. Yeah, th that actually sounds even better because I was thinking, you know, if he can tilt his uh, head um, with, you know, the little mouse or make it a little bit different, then he could have a virtual keyboard and tilt his head. And if he stays on a highlighted word, then it would push the word. Mm. Of course, he'd be there forever, but maybe people who can't speak, you know, that's better than... Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Navigation is, is something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot of um, projects for the disabled community. Um, Caleb Kraft just posted up one recently, and it was a, a game, and, you know, lots of game controllers right. are, are usually the first things that are used. I was wondering why, it, it's, can, can you make, like, tongue controllers? Do, do yeah. you have the use of his tongue? Because the I tongue is, tongue. you can you move tongues around really fast, and, like, mm. If, I, I know it sounds like weird, but if you could have like something you put in your mouth, mm -hmm. like I've seen those types of controllers. Like we have a little joystick that's for the PlayStation. It's one of the, the little mini PSP joysticks. Mm -hmm. I haven't really tried controlling it with my tongue, but I have the feeling that you could actually get pretty good resolution very fast really? with it. So I don't know, but that, you know, you'd have to cover it with a um, food-safe plastic. Yeah. But that you know, that's not maybe too difficult to do. That might be a good idea. I don't know how... Well, he's on a ventilator, unfortunately. Oh, so okay, so he can't put anything in his mouth. All right. right. I'm not sure, but yeah, anyway, so that's 
basically what I'm trying to do. And then the other thing is another person on there, uh, his name is Trep. He was a, a an artist, and they created something called the uh, the Brain. Well, now it's going to be the Brain Writer. It, it was the Eye Writer, a little thing that goes on the eye. It detects yeah. how many times you blink and whatnot. But the problem is he now can't blink too much, so that's where the Brain uh, Reader comes in using the emotive uh, brainwave uh, uh, headset. Wow, intense. All right. All right, this sounds pretty cool. Yeah, please uh, come back and uh, and show us the project as it's continuing. We'd like to check it out. And okay. uh, when I have my Bluetooth thing, just email us and I'll send you out one. Uh, yeah. It's in, still in finishing testing, so just if it's not like next week, it'll be the week after, et cetera. Yeah, but please we'll, let me know. Uh, we'll blog it up for sure. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, Lance. Don't forget to email support at adafruit.com for a show and tell sticker, of course. Okay, John. I'm mean, you're right. You're up. How goes the watch project? Oh, it's great. Um, I've been doing some random uh, stuff, looking at battery sizes and current draw, and how I can uh, maximize battery life and stuff like that. I didn't really have anything planned for tonight. Uh, just little things. Um, I hacked open a little webcam that I had lying around oh, cool. and took out the infrared filter and built a little uh, illuminator. Neat. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I can see there. it, but you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is 850 nanometers, so I can see a dull red glow, but. Yeah, yeah, no, I see it. Right right on the camera. That's right. Mm -hmm. But this one sees everything. It it lights up like, whole rooms and uh, my backyard and everything. It's cool. It's like here. All right. All right. Neat. Okay. And that's it for tonight. Do you want to show anything that you're working on, Lady Anna? Well, we were. Okay. I was working today. You have, you have a show and tell. I do. I was expecting. Oh, I actually came here because I wanted to show um, Colin and Phil, but I'm working with um, a really nice fellow named uh, Frank Zhao on the Mini Pop 4. The Mini Pop is a Precision Vision kit that we sell. And um, the original one used a parallel port. Yeah. And back then, actually, there were parallel ports back in the day. And then they're like, there was none. And then I was like, okay, well, I'll move to a serial port. There were still computers that had serial ports. Yeah. You program over serial port. And then, like, now it's actually, it's very hard to find serial ports. So this new version uses a USB port, and it's color. So I'm like, i got to upgrade this. Yeah. Okay. So, this is, um, this is, it's not out yet. So it is a little test. It's, 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 this is multiple features right now. Yeah, so this is. Oh, look at that. It's hard to see because of the. Um, I'm going to get smacked in the head. Yeah, I know. It's going to be a move back. But yeah. it has a little heart, and it says mini pov. And uh, I'm still working on it. We can at least see the heart usually. Yeah, yeah you can definitely see it. Heart shape. And the color doesn't show up. It's really well lit in here, which is kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. We should turn the lights off when we demo it. Yeah. But that's just my show and tell. I'm still working on it. Okay, great. All right. Um, email me and I'll give you a sticker. Yay! <laughs> all right, don't forget, John, email support to come. Oh, look at all these people coming. Wait, out. there's something there's like okay. all these people. Mike. Hello, Mike. Unmute your mic and show us your project. Hey, how are you? Good. Just a quick update. I uh, I know you guys were talking about some solar stuff, so I, I did your uh, kit here with the um, streaming player with Pandora, but I actually looked it up. I found this hanging around from an old stocking stuffer, and it's just a little solar panel, and it actually worked, so I can power it by the sun. So I was happy to do that. Great. I had the, I don't know if you guys have seen the Ninja Block. Yeah. Um, basically it's just, I have one around here somewhere. Yeah, it's pretty cool inside of it. You can see it's got the RF stuff and the radio stuff. Um, so I've been playing with that a lot, and I hooked up a button, uh, 433 megahertz, uh, so people can buzz in and out of my lab. And I wanted to hook up a speaker to it, so I just hacked in and figured out when I pushed the button what was hot and what was not, mm -hmm. and hooked up a uh, little speaker here. So when I push it, um, let me show you real quick. Pretty simple, just makes a noise yeah. there, but I actually bought one of your, see if you can see that, one of your little switches, so I could actually switch it off, and then that way when I push the button, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. you know, fire the speaker. Right. Nap, nap zone. Mm -hmm. Nap mode. That's right. Nap that's mode. Right. So that is a loud one. buzzer. But that's pretty much it, just continuing on some of the other projects in messing with the, uh, with the ninja block, and I've hooked up some uh, cameras so that when folks come in the door, it takes a picture of them. Um, and just sends it to me, um, so that way I can be alerted if someone comes into the house. Uh, but other than that, that's just all I have right now. All right. Very cool stuff, that's Mike. Cool. You're on. Uh, this is a relatively new hobby for you, right? Like all this electronic stuff. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm a software guy. I was a web developer. I own a web development company, and and I uh, just started to pick this up about last month ago, and I'm really enjoying it. And your tutorials have been immensely helpful. Oh, um, and I kind of found a little love uh, and uh, a nice little hobby. So I enjoy it. And thank you guys, because I wouldn't be able to do it without y'all. Oh, okay. thank you. I like how you just completely jumped in. These are pretty advanced projects. Yeah, so. yeah this is cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I think the web background helps a little bit, but yeah. um, I definitely had to up my skills in soldering. You do <laughs> have an advantage because a lot of the stuff is is like firmware and software, and so we have a lot of hardware people who are like, they are just like, I don't understand like pointers, and I'm like, okay, but you understand mm -hmm. voltage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. like you, you know, that's cool, but um, a lot of uh, software stuff now is like, okay, you have to do like. Stack manipulation, data structures, like moving stuff in and out, and is, is there you know there's only a little bit of actual hardware at the end. Yeah, and especially and stuff like Raspberry Pi, you can attach hardware, but it's still it's it's all software Python. Yeah, yeah, and things like JSON don't scare me, so I, I yeah. wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's like the least scary of all the. Uh, it's the least scary things. when they're just a name. As soon as you start to see the structures and the yeah, syntax, yeah. it's uh, JSON is the bad. I can no you can idiot. parse JSON with an Arduino, which isn't so bad. Um, <laughs> HTML is a little scarier, though. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank All right. you. We'll drop us notes. Sportedatafruit.com. You get your uh, scene on the show and tell sticker. And Robert, unmute your mic and show us your project. How are you, Robert? Dope. I can't hear you. Is your mic muted? Maybe you're muted. Yeah, you're still. You may want to unmute your mic, mm -hmm. unless make your charades. Make, make your charades. charades. If, if the mute, if the if the mic isn't. There a, we go. How's oh, that? We got you. Everybody likes making charades. Time. Still trying to figure out uh, this Google stuff. Um, we all are. <laughs> I don't understand it. It's completely new. It's boring once I figured it out, so enjoy it. Yeah, I jumped into it when it was brand new, and then and then they changed it. So um, what I have is uh, I like to use these uh, NXP microcontrollers and these LPC Espresso boards, but the problem with the LPC Espresso board is that they um, take up you know, a whole proto board. So you can't really, uh, you know, do uh, prototyping with uh, breakout boards very easily. So I, huge. yeah, so I built a, um, a, ah, figure out how to do this, a uh, little breadboard that actually uses one of your proto boards. And then I put uh, connectors on it for the LPC Espresso. And then I put a bunch of, uh, switches with some debouncers and one of the other lame things about the well not well I shouldn't say it that way one of the problems <laughs> with the LPC Espresso board is that they don't uh, expose 5 volts so if you want to hook it up to a sensor if you need 5 volts it's not available so you have to get it from somewhere else uh, which is too bad because it's driven by a, a um, the way LPC Espresso works is you I'm gonna just lift the camera is you uh, you um, you hook it up to a USB connector, and then they provide a really nice IDE for doing development. And uh, also, I've been working a little bit with K Town and using some of his K Town. Stuff. So yeah, I know. <laughs> Throw up the gang signs for K Town. Yeah. So what I uh, have is a uh, prototype area now, and I have the, the switches with LEDs, so you can. I'm gonna put this all out on uh, GitHub, so it's available for people if they want to. Build their yeah, own, the LPC expressors are excellent, but yeah, they are. They're kind of like a little bit chunky, but they're like thirty dollars, so you can't, yeah, I, can't complain too much. Um, no, it's totally, it's totally way cheaper than it ought to be because it's uh, NXP just like gives them all the chips for free or something, or they do the assembly for free. I don't know how. Yeah, they I don't know how they do it. it. <laughs> and like the parts cost is more than the the final cost, and like we sell uh, the LPC mm. expressors, and we get reseller pricing. So yeah, yeah I don't know. It's That's like I, it's like you can't really compete. It's a good deal. Yeah, and especially when it comes with the Eclipse-based IDE, so you can do all your development and you have a yeah. debugger and so forth, which is something I really um, appreciate, and I think it's really missing out of things like Arduino is the ability to debug. And, yeah. Um, well, Atmel didn't release the debug wire specs. That's just yeah. all it is. They, there's a debug interface on it, but they didn't release the specification, so we can't use it. Well, anyway, um, so... This is more of a, a tool that I built that I, I kind of like, and I'll put it out on the GitHub under the open source hardware license, so if somebody else wants to build it up, they can. But just okay. an idea for how to work Great. with these LPC Expressos. Very cool. Okay, Robert, 
Don't forget to email support at adafruit.com. I believe there's room on the back of the board for an <laughs> FCN on the show. It's all sticky. Yeah, those are huge. Okay. <laughs> and, and where are you right now where it's nice and sunny out? And it's about 103 degrees outside in Boise, Idaho. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, okay. it's, uh, well, I closed the curtains but so that wouldn't be too bright in here, but it's, it's, uh, mm. it's hot out there. <laughs> well, look at all that space. Yeah, w today, 130 in like Vegas or something like that. Like it's, it's a hot no, day. Vegas is always the worst. Yeah. It's a hot day. Well, it's always like that here this time of year. We usually, most of July is pretty hot. But. Oh, yeah, Lance is saying 115 here in Vegas. Wow. That's ridiculous. It is hot. Okay, everyone, we'll stay cool. Really nice. yeah. Okay. And uh, we'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer soon. Hydrate. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Mike. Thank, Thank you, Mike. I'll get up, Mike. Thank you. Chuck. <laughs> and don't forget, email support at adafruit.com if you showed your project and get some stickers. Give out some stickers. Everyone and wants stickers. maybe um, one of those coolers if you're in <laughs> Okay. What coolers? A little USB fan.